Hello there, this is Bic Benedict. We're playing Sniper Elite V2 on Sniper Elite difficulty. This is Mission 5, it's entitled St. Olibartis Church. So, the reason that I sprinted up, up here, well, let me first say that I, I didn't sprint up here, I just, I ran, but without holding the left bumper to actually sprint. Because if you do that, then this guy will approach this, this pile of concrete rubble. And if he's close enough, you can do the stealth takedown. Otherwise, you'll need to get your well rod out and and proceed to come up this way. So there's going to be one sniper to deal with on this particular house. And by the way, I have some extremely negative things to say about this level. And I'll do so after I uh, at least discuss the main um, the main tenets of this first encounter because it's it's quite quite um, confusing. So, obviously, when you get the, um, the sound icon in the top right, then you shoot. And only then, because otherwise you'll, you will spawn more enemies, and it becomes a big catastrophe, as usual. Um, so, that is the third enemy. And then, the next enemy is in that, um, in that doorway across the way you may have, you may have seen him earlier but what we're going to do is throw a rock and try to get him lured out because if you can just swap shoulders uh, you could easily hit him but this is not a game where you swap shoulders it's just not it's not built into the game the only issue here is when you throw a rock if the rock lands when the the sound icon is uh, the church bells I, I guess it is in this chapter if the church bells are ringing when the rock lands then the sound of the rock is going to fall on deaf ears and then this guy won't even come out so you'll be you'll need to be prepared to throw several just in case and they give you an infinite number however there's a certain duration of time in between the throws but at this point you're free to make as much noise as you want I'm not particularly sure why. I think it's that the other enemies are just far too, um, just they're they're not even in the picture at this point. And what we're going to be doing is destroying this tank. That was a damn good shot on my part. First shot right there. No editing. Usually it takes me quite a lot. And and after this, we're going to take out the guy who just shot me right there. So sometimes um, that guy will take a shot at you as you're trying to shoot the tank. Or, as you're trying to move into the doorway over to the right where that enemy was that we tried to lure out with a rock. And which is the way that we're going to be going in a minute to, to secure a checkpoint. So it, it just depends. And it's, it's just difficult because there's no other mode of seeing in the dark. There are no night vision goggles that I'm aware of. Nothing like that. And this guy is, is um, behind plumes of, of smoke that perpetually rise in the distance so it's it's just a matter of uh well you can see him there that was kind of a a rare thing that the 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 plumes dissipated like that i'm not sure why maybe there's a set pattern to them where they where there's a little gap in the um the opacity there but once that section's clear you can actually run down the street and kill more enemies or you can come over here and get a checkpoint. I would advise the latter. The checkpoint is right in that doorway right here. So once you come up here, you do not... Um, here's the bad thing about this. If you run past the checkpoint, I'm not sure exactly where the checkpoint, like tripwire point is, to where you walk over it and you get a checkpoint. What's going to happen is you're going to save the fact that these guys are aggroed, and then every time you reset, What's going to happen is these guys are going to be walking around and looking for you. So it's it's highly advanta highly advantageous to, to just creep um, through that house right there, then secure the checkpoint. There's a couple of bad, really bad checkpoints over here for you to uh, to deal with. And admit it, and honestly, what I would do if if I aggroed those guys and saved the, the fact that they their backs were not turned and they were walking around, I would just reset the chapter. So what I'm doing now is is I'm starting to kill people and I'm using the, the sound muffling technique of the church bells. But what I was experiencing here was that the church bells would stop ringing and it's not about the difficulty, 
and I think it has to do with just the the erratic nature of this particular chapter not functioning properly to be brutally honest about it because there are times when uh, the church bells were ringing for me throughout all of this whole time that I was trying to get into the church and there are other times when they would stop at the last checkpoint so I don't know you know I have no idea what was going on there but it was highly frustrating me so what I decided to do was come back here and take a couple of shots at this sniper that I knew was perched up here and just take him down and also take down this next tank although this tank it has a has a mean, really mean way of seeing you and I don't mean rough or anything you know like a rough way I mean um, it's almost like it has eyes on it and it does it really does but it's not like it, it just seems kind of a supernatural thing and it, it kind of disturbs me the way that this thing is so omniscient so what I really detest about this is, uh, you know, I had never gotten to this chapter. This took me an entire day to finally get in here because I started this video about six times. Maybe that's a little bit too high. Maybe uh, like five times. Just starting the video, putting clips together, getting frustrated, doubting myself, just not liking it, not liking the attempt. So I would just delete all the files from the video and start the video over. And I, I got to this level thinking to myself, you know, we're going to continue on with the stealth element of the game. And it just, it just crumbled into Gears of War. And there's nothing I like more than Gears of War. But this is not Gears of War. It descends and, um, do I get this shot here? This thing is really hard to hit. Those things are very small targets. But I got here thinking, you know, the game is going to continue as normal. There's going to be, you know, if it's not easy, then at least a marginally challenging way of sneaking past the enemies. I think I'm giving up on the whole sound notion here. And I'm doubling back here. So I think I think I am going to stick this out because what I what I want is I want to get all the kill. Do you know? Okay, so I we we are resting on a checkpoint right now. So what's going to happen next is that we're going to rest on a final checkpoint before we get into the church. And it's basically up to you. If you pass the checkpoint and enemies are aggroed, just like the previous checkpoint. Um, you'll hear like, like right when you start and reload the checkpoint you're gonna hear that battle music meaning that you know all shits blown loose you know hiding is out of the question because the enemies are aggroed so you're gonna take the state of the environment right through that checkpoint and I'm going to take what I'm gonna take is is the state of my environment when I go through the checkpoint is gonna be you know chaos hell on earth everybody coming for me however I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that the numbers I'm gonna take subtract as many numbers of enemies as I possibly can and then run through the checkpoint so it won't be as, as arduous for me this is look, look how temperamental this shot can be right there just aim a little bit over it and you should get it there seems to be some kind of a sweet point to it or a sweet spot but with that vehicle killed right there we are going to run back obviously people know that we're afoot here and they're going to be gunning for us, no pun intended. And I'll show you where the next checkpoint is. It's just that with the progress we've made, we don't want to get killed trying to get to the checkpoint. And it's not particularly hard to do so. However, we do need to get below the enemy's sight lines. So. Anyway, so when I, like I said, when I got to this chapter... Um, you know this game it just doesn't play well when it's playing like Gears of War and what I mean by that is when it's all action and you know and you're going behind cover it just doesn't have that fluidity and you die extremely quickly as you would expect it's the hardest difficulty I don't I don't mind that at all I just mind that 
this game it wasn't designed to be played like Gears of War. I mean, I can't say it that many, stress it as many times as that, but I, I do want to say when this checkpoint occurs, it's, it occurs right as you go through. Um, well, it isn't this doorway. It might be, but I'll show you exactly where they place you. They place you right here, so you'll notice the edit right there. So we need to get to the church, and getting there is no small task if you've got tanks trying to kill you as well as a bunch of enemies so I just I have no respect for this chapter and it has nothing to do with it being hard because it is hard and the reason it's hard is just because it doesn't work very well this should have been designed to do stealthily and quite honestly I don't think it can be done stealthily I um I actually I was extremely curious if anybody was doing it had done it stealthily so after you know I I made my little stake on this I, I did it the way I wanted to the way I only way I could figure out how then I went on YouTube and just looked for people uh, trying to do it in a stealthy manner because I find that if you're looking for things like while you're doing the part whether whether or not you you have any intentions of mimicking what what's being shown on screen it's very easy to mimic unconsciously as I've mentioned before in other guides um, what people have done so I, I stay away from that uh, it's one of the biggest things I do is I stay away from it so we're trying to get to that waypoint and we are gonna get a check I think you get a check yeah you get a checkpoint in here which is pretty kind of the game but cycling through all of the uh, with all of the items I don't know how it works on on uh, with a keyboard because I don't use a keyboard but I don't know if there are individual numbers or, or letters which all um, you know if there are hot keys for each and every sub weapon which would make the process of of selecting them a lot easier than cycling through them with a left and right button on a d-pad like the control pad does I don't know that but I do know that it's awkward to fight like this um, especially when you can't even switch shoulders now I know in Gears of War sw switching shoulders is, is limited to when you're in cover but still um, at least it's implemented in the game somehow and also the fact that there's just hardly any ammunition for these guns. I, the gun that I have has the most um, um, prolific uh, drops of, of uh, um, ammo, so that's why I use it despite how weak it is. Because I feel that, you know, if you get headshots, it's not going to matter too drastically if you have a weak weapon, because headshots are, um, you know, they, they do the real business of killing enemies. So. I would say just sprint in here. Sprint in here, you will secure a checkpoint. You may have noticed in that transition there I had blood on the screen and then I didn't. That's because I'm leaking up footage, you guys. And then from this point on, I really don't have many issues with the chapter. It's just that first sequence that's a big, big mess. So what we're going to be doing up here is a series of um, what I suppose you might consider three trials or um, three tasks where you're uh, warding off foes and the first one is going to occur up here and they all simply involve just killing enemies um, but it, it does they are distinct in, in, in the fact that it's it's three assaults by enemies and it's broken by um, two checkpoints in between those three if you include the one like right before this one so survive the German attack zero of three it mentions I think or one of three it said um, it probably said zero because we haven't quite completed this yet but I do think that this game is gorgeous I'm I, I, the mechanics of oh yeah I'll be shooting that one I don't really care about the, the the wine bottles too much but I just wanted to point out that that's how to get that one if you want it fucking jungle juice. I'll give you some jungle juice, you goddamn game. Putting me through this for an entire day. I'm sorry to be so bitter about it, but... Um, especially when it's like every man for himself on a game like this, where I'm trying to impart strategies. 
I'm trying to lead you guys places and direct people to do certain things. But when all hell breaks loose, you know, there's so many variables that can go wrong for anybody that it makes doing the process of a guide a little bit redundant for this game. You know. Um, but when I was searching on YouTube, I found I just found a ton of people playing on lesser difficulties, and it just it kind of makes me mad. Um, not just because these people have a lot of views; some of them don't even have that many views at all. But I don't I don't understand people that don't at least try to be challenged by games. You know, I know a lot of people have busy lives and they just want a distraction. But a lot of people on YouTube that post stuff they're very serious gamers, as am I. But I think if you're if you want to respect a game, you should you should play it on the highest setting that it offers. And that's always been my channel, uh, the motive for my channel. You know, it's it is about ego. I will I, I'll admit that because actually I really love listening back to my own videos. That's why I've, I've said that before. I listen back to my, each and every own each one each and every one of my videos. I listen back to it, and I try as much as I can to interact with with um, with you guys. You know, if if I had a choice between playing more games and interacting with the subscribers, I would choose the latter. You know, I really feel bad when these other channels, and it's not mentioning anybody, it's just, uh, well, especially the larger channels, they, um, they stretch themselves too thin, they, you know, they cut, they just cover too many topics, and, you know, the, just the subscriber engagement level is just not to my liking, so I like to bring that to my channel as well. You know, and that doesn't mean I can't play games because I, I do play games. And I guess I'm just really on top of my mobile phone because whenever I get a message from you guys on YouTube, um, when it's actually working, I can respond really quickly because my phone's right next to me. But you know, if I'm busy or I'm, if I'm working, doing my business stuff, I just leave that alone. I don't really even touch it, but uh, I do come back to it. I do come back to it. So. So anyway, I, I feel very strongly about that, particularly when you know I'm trying to contact the channel and I just don't get any response. And again, it's it's norm it's normally the bigger channels, and you really can't expect too much from that. But you should be able to. I mean, you should. Another thing, if you try to leave this this landing up here, you will fail every time. So the idea is you need to stave off these um, these invasions, and if you do not, then you'll fail. And it seems obvious, but um, there were times when I, I didn't really know where the next invasion was coming from, so I was just running around the place, and I failed because I left the area that I was supposed to be staying in. So... I believe you do need to do these vehicle kills. I think those count as as numbers that you need to take down. But anyway, I really hope that this chapter is, you know, if there's if there is going to be a lowest point, I hope it. I hope I hope. Excuse me, that I've already been subjected to it, namely this chapter, and I hope things just progressively get better with this game because for me, this is definitely a low point in the game. It just it just collapses on that first section. So more tanks are coming now. And we're just going to try to compensate for the wind factor up here because this is a very uh, open area up here, meaning there's a lot more wind. Uh, but when I was looking at these other channels playing these games, and by the way, I didn't find anybody doing stealth. Um, I found them doing stealth a little bit, but not completely. And that just reinforced my suspicion that this cannot be done stealthily. Like, obviously, this, this is not stealth. But getting into the church, 
I thought that that you know it might be possible in some weird way you know some pro out there doing it and maybe there even there is but I just didn't find it but again I don't think it exists but I just found a ton of people you know I saw things on the screen that are not on my screen like the threat indicator um, the the aiming assistance reticle you know everything like that having an advantage and I just thought to myself when I saw those things you don't need you do not need those like those do not help you in any way um, you know you can play the game perfectly fine on this difficulty you know and, and without needing those handy those crutches so one guy in a trench coat decides to come up here and we'll take care of him um, that is not par for the course if you'll excuse the colloquial expression we are going to head down the stairs now and stave off um, a final onslaught and it's the most um, awkward to be sure because at some point we're going to be um, uh, kind of just gyrating on a platform up here that sounds pretty bad but um, you know if you're going to switch select your loadout for this chapter I would I would select a high number of, of the projectiles so that you can throw them because um, it's going to be too difficult to fight these enemies on their level, meaning that coming up here will be necessary. And you might even see me use a couple of trip mines here. The only reason I did this is because there was uh, one infrequent time when an enemy rushed up here, but on the half a dozen or so attempts that this took me, None, no other enemy. I mean, maybe 10 attempts. I, I don't remember how many times I perished. But only one enemy ever rushed up here, and I just don't think it's typical. So um, you might as well use it just to give yourself a little peace of mind. But in the area where I'm shooting, there's like half a dozen guys over in the area where we came into this church. And this is what I meant about us gyrating on this. We're just kind of moving around here on this thing and as long as you don't put your neck out too far you should be okay over here so you might be thinking when when do you get this oh shit I almost spilled my glass of water <laughs> um, when do you get this like see the headshots I'm getting these headshots but why am I not getting the cinematic I think that it's just a random random of the game I was um, watching some videos of this the making of this game and they were saying that the calculations that they make to um, for the bone shattering and the position of the enemies and like the like little the little scenery where the enemies at are all done in real time so I thought that was quite impressive I'm sure this game doesn't run anything more than 30 frames on the consoles, but it certainly runs very nicely on the PC. And I don't m mean to sound like a snob whatsoever, um, but I, I just don't really feel like the PC, um, or excuse me, the consoles, I mean if you have a nice PC, and I'm not saying I have the nicest PC, um, I love my PC. Um, I've just become more of a, a fan of technology over the years. Um, I am going to be upgrading to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, I, I installed an SSD, which is um, it's decreased my my boot time from 45 seconds to 15. I said 10 in another guide, but it's actually 15 seconds for a um, for a cold boot. For a warm boot, I think it's a little bit more. I'm not sure. Um, But I, anyway, um, so now coming over here, almost, almost got killed. But there has been some discussion on one of my Devil May Cry videos that, um, that it's just better to get physical copies of discs. And I used to be like that. Um, but Steam has kind of weaned me off physical discs. And I just, I just recently sold my PS3 and all of the games for it and no regrets I mean um, 
that does that mean there will be no God of War content in the future? It, it actually does, um, unless God of War 4 ever comes out. Then obviously I'll make a guide for that, but at this point in time I don't own God of War anymore. I do not own Ninja Gaiden Sigma or Sigma 2. So, you know, that... However, I do own Ninja Gaiden 2. I'm not going to sell my Xbox 360. And the only reason is, honestly, it's for Ninja Gaiden 2. If that game was on PC, I wouldn't have a 360. Unless it was a horrible port. But I sold everything with zero regrets. And I will be picking up the Uncharted Collection next month. Um, probably not digitally, just because of the... the um, the PlayStation Network downloads things um, like it, like it's horrible. It's so long of a process. So I'll probably just pick up the discs. But I am looking forward to that. Um, I just don't feel the need to hang on to anything anymore. I'm not a collector of, of games. I just play games. You know, I, I'm comfortable with my Steam library. It not, and I know not everybody is. And you know we can all respect each other's preferences because they're personal and unique and therefore inarguable. So I think this chapter is done, you guys. We're just going to run up here, and I will see you in the next chapter. Take care of yourselves. This has been Vic Benedict. I'm Audi Five Thousand.